Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to World of Warships with the Hive Hound and today we're taking the New Orleans out for a little spin. So what's waiting to get in a battle? A quick introduction to the ship. The uh, New Orleans class um, cruiser was the last type of cruiser to come under the uh, the, uh, the treaty laws um, that prevented ships being over a hundred uh, or 10,000 long tons. The New Orleans itself is a very, very famous battleship, uh, being one of the highest decorated ships of the world, of World War II, receiving over 17 battle stars herself, along with her two sister ships, the San Francisco and the Minneapolis. And, uh, well, okay, so we're getting into the battle. So we're divisioned up with Kuvaris here, right in front of us, and uh, Venom. They've dropped a smoke right at the start. We have a Colorado. We're completely hidden. So uh, whilst we're hidden, we're going to make uh, make hay whilst the sun shines. And uh, um, he's slightly angled, so I'm not going to use armor pierce in here. We're going to focus on uh, using high explosive and try and get some fires going. So we set our first fire. And he almost immediately puts it out. So because obviously he's going to be on his his uh, uh, repair party is going to be working its magic, and he's going to be impervious to fire for a little bit. We switch to the Amagi, and uh, then switch back to the Colorado because now, obviously can't use his repair party so if we set a fire that's going to burn for the full minute and we're about to see how exactly you don't play a new orleans so he's detected he's out in the open he can see shots come in and yet he's sailing broadside now although the new orleans is classed as a heavy cruiser it's classed as a heavy cruiser because it has eight inch guns it's not a heavy cruiser because it's got lots of armor because it doesn't as you can see three citadels there with our first salvo now as you can see it continues to sail in a straight line absolutely no change to course and direction and uh yeah exactly the same thing happens giving ourselves a further three citadels and we also knock out his engine i'm not entirely sure he seems to be completely oblivious to the fact that he's being set uh lit up by uh by myself so one more salvo and uh, and that should be the end of the new orleans and there we go picking up another citadel hit and our first kill of the match now we don't have smoke screen we're exposed we're sitting broadside not the best tactic as we've just seen so the first thing we do we start accelerating turning away using uh, trying to make ourselves uh uh, less of a target um, obviously if you're sitting there broadside you're going to get focused we uh, take some return hits from that Amagi and then follow up shots by the Colorado knocking just over a thousand hit points off us so we keep sailing away the idea here is don't be a priority target there's two battleships right by me battleships have far more HP uh, hit points so they can take a bit of a beating. They can also repair. In your cruiser, you can't. So my plan here is, is to get around behind the battleships. And so they become, hopefully become the priority target for the, the ships chasing us. And continue the reign of destruction with high explosives. We're already on 75,000 damage, which is a pretty good start, I'd say, for a cruiser within the first five minutes of the battle. As we turn around our last battleship here, obviously the Colorado is completely out of our range now. The only ship that we have in our sights is the Amagi, so we're going to assist our team as much as we can by trying to kill that as fast as possible. And our long range HC shots go in, and we get another fire. This is our fourth fire so far of the match. Notice how I aim slightly further forward there. 
There, there's a total of four points on a ship where you can set fires. The Amagi's burnt its repair kit. So, and to set fires in those four different locations, the, the, the rear of the ship, the very front of the ship, and you can get two fires in the centre of the ship. That fire is now obviously going to burn for the full duration because his repair kit is just off cooldown. So yeah, so you will see me adjusting my aim slightly. Uh, see, we hit the rear again there, so I'm giving him a bit more lead, trying to get a central fire going. Because uh, obviously the fire damage racks up over time, and if you've got two or three fires on a ship, they're going to go down significantly quicker. So we're turning back in because he is getting to the end of our range. Uh, obviously we've upset the Amagi with all our fires and uh, high explosive damage, so he's... Uh, He's taking shots at us. We're down to 6,000 HP. But just because you're, you're low on health, never think, ah, right, oh, well, that's it. I might as well just try and do how much, however much damage I can do. Because whilst you've still got all your guns, you can still do as much damage as if you're a full HP ship. So we're turning, getting our fires off. He's obviously focusing on our friend Venom there. And there, he's gone. Uh, we didn't pick up the kill, but we did do, um, well, uh, uh, at least 30,000 damage to to the Amagi on top. So, switching back to the Colorado. Again, I know I'm just using, it looks like I'm just spamming HE, but he is angled. So there's absolutely no point in trying to fire AP. It's just all going to bounce off the side of his ship. So same thing, see as we're kiting away, we're angled, giving us the option to use all of our guns. Granted, I could have changed to AP there, but he is turning and he is beginning uh, to, to run away from us. We're just trying to get a final fire, so that's two fires that we have going on the Colorado. Again, focusing on, on our friend Venom there, and Venom unfortunately meets uh, his untimely end but uh, but thanks to Gavaris and uh, and Venom, they did uh, they did provide really good support right at the start of the battle, keeping everything spotted, laying smoke screens, which is exactly how destroyers should work. All right, you know they did they didn't cap the flag, but there was a destroyer, a cruiser, and three battleships. Completely understandable to move away, but they did give us the uh, the time we needed. And the assistance we needed to absolutely dominate the space. Kuvaris now, uh, now that we've cleared the uh, the majority of the enemies, is coming back in to uh, to get the cap and uh, try and help us maintain this points lead we've got from kills. With obviously the enemy having two caps uh, to our one, and there we just hit our first high caliber medal. We're on one hundred and thirty thousand damage, and uh, and again the. Uh, the Nagato is under fire from everyone else, so we get two fires in a single salvo. And we are going to continue to uh, burn his repair kit, so we're going to continue to uh, to try and create fires. He's very close to his end, and there we go. So we're still on, well, we may only be on one kill, but we've been incredibly valuable to our team. 138,000 damage. Uh, half of that coming from being less than 700 hit points left which is uh, which is why I always state the importance of uh, of understanding that you know just because you've got no hit points left doesn't mean that you uh, you automatically become useless to your team so there's just a cruiser and a battleship left there's a fellow New Orleans on the enemy team and uh, I believe the King George is white at the eastern southeastern side of the map so we we may not get an opportunity to get any more shots in off him so as you can see the new orleans is full health currently our uh, our fellow fellow captain kuvaris there is uh successfully capty and uh i'm assuming he's waiting there to set up a, a some sort of torpedo run so uh we're trying to get into range of the New Orleans whilst he's spotted and get ourselves a salve off. As you can see, we've switched to armor piercing ready because it's broadside New Orleans. 
and everyone's seen what happened to the last one that decided to sail broadside to us. Slowly but surely closing the distance in the, in the final minutes of this match. He's turned, so we're going to hold our fire. We could shoot at him, but it'd be a waste of a salvo. He's not turning, so we continue. We, we decide, okay, not much else we can do. Let's fire our guns off. He's kiting directly towards us, making himself a particularly hard target at the moment. As we score our first as we score our first couple of hits against the new uh, the new Orleans there. And there he goes. The final mistake he'll make of the match. He turns completely broadside to uh, a fellow New Orleans. We uh, get a couple of good penetrating shots. We turn away to uh, protect our uh, our very weak broadside. Take 2,000 damage and return with three citadels and 15,000 damage, I believe. And that is... Uh, that is pretty much the end of this match now. So uh, just like to, again, reiterate, doesn't matter. You can have 10,000 hit points or you can have one. Your ship is always valuable and YOLOing is never a good idea. And, and exactly how to play um, cruisers. I want to take advantage of the concealment and take advantage of causing fires on battleships when the opportunity arises like it did with both those new orleans if you've got the broadside switch to ap get those uh, citadel shots those high penetration damages and get them out of the match as soon as possible and uh again a shout out to uh to my uh, my friends there kivaris and uh venom for uh for joining in the battle providing that good smoke screen cover doing exactly what destroyers should do um they they in this battle they played a very good supporting role they uh they came back they capped the flag they uh they distracted the uh battleships uh which is how venom died but it did give us the opportunity to uh to kill them so we finished that battle on 140 140 penetrating shots our shots hit sorry they didn't all penetrate obviously nine fires four incapacitations 10 citadels against fellow new orleans two kills and uh and the high caliber medal now you can see um our uh one of our battleships is taking on their queen elizabeth i can't remember exactly what they were but this match uh, should be wrapped up very shortly so uh back to the the new orleans i guess um whilst we're waiting for this to pan out uh the new orleans was actually uh, the first its keel was laid on the 14th of march 1931 in the brooklands navy yard and was launched uh almost a whole two years later on the 12th of april of 1933 uh it was sponsored by cora s jenky i think i'm pronouncing right uh, uh, who is from New Orleans, uh, him and his daughter um, were civil engineers and, and president of the Jenkins Shipping Company in New Orleans. Uh, Jenkins had served under the assistant secretary of the U.S. Navy and administration under President Hoover before rejoining the private sector in 1933 so um that's the end of our video today i hope you found it helpful and until next time take care